Uh, welcome back to another Prevail Compliance Corner with your two zany, um, some say we're sane, uh, host Orly Burlov and Noelle Vestal. All right. And we try to make this an entertaining little bit for you to learn about compliance and maybe get a few laughs if we're lucky. Okay. Um, and so today we're talking about something super funny. We're talking about VDI. Um, yeah, VDI. Now, why is VDI a funny topic? Um, I'm not sure, but what? Uh, yeah, virtual desktop interface. Did I get that right? Yeah, infrastructure, but yes. Infra first virtual desktop infrastructure. infrastructure. All yeah. right. So the reason why this is slightly funny, it'll be apparent to you in just a moment, but to kick it off, you know, Noel, you were telling me people in a lot of your compliance calls say, hey, uh, I have to use a virtual desktop um, in infrastructure. And, you know, someone told me I have to use that as part of my CMMC compliance. And so that made us think of, well, let's just get started with that slide. <laughs> I thought this was funny. Uh, you told me some people say that they have to have a virtual desktop uh, infrastructure and you say, what, who told you that? Um, and we thought, well, maybe it was Satan. <laughs> it's some sort of satanic vibe here. So church lady comes and says, who told you you had to have a VDI? Was it Satan? <laughs> No, taking it way back, really. I like it. I'm taking it way back, but you know, I, I presented that to some of the other people on our team, and they thought it was funny too. So. It is. It's great. All right. I laughed when you sent it to me. So yeah. Oh, okay. great. All right. So, what is a virtual desktop infrastructure? Um, why don't we kick it off with just like a basic understanding of what VDI is, the types? Sure. Absolutely. So uh, a VDI is just a technology that uses a virtual machine. Now, this is different than remote desktop. So a remote desktop is where you actually go to another person's computer, a physical computer that they have. Right. Uh, virtual desktop infrastructure is actually, <clears throat> excuse me, a server. So you've got either like a part of a server or a whole server, which would be kind of a waste. But usually it's a part of a server that you would actually sort of partition off and turn into this virtual desktop infrastructure that can be accessed by multiple users at multiple times. And so there are two types, right? You were telling me a persistent and non-persistent. Persistent is one where it keeps on saying, hello, hello, <laughs> I'm here, hello. No, sorry. That's uh, no, that would, be, that would be very annoying, but also interesting. But no, a persistent VDI is, is usually the one that people, um, I think, associate the most with VDIs. So that's the one where you you log into the VDI It's an in, and it sort of acts like your own personal machine. So like you have your little login, you come in, it brings up your email, it brings up, you know, your information, all of your applications that you have on your desktop. It basically looks like your laptop does, you know, however you left it, that's how it's going to always look. So right. it remembers whatever personalized options you made on that desktop platform. And then when you come back in, it's still there. Non-persistent VDI is actually a little bit different where every time you log in, it's just a very generic machine. It's a generic right. desktop. Whatever you do, that session of the VDI will stay in that session. The minute you disconnect, it's gone. So if you like, you know, hooked up your Outlook email, for example, that would work in that one session if you're non-persistent VDI. The minute you get out of that session, if you came back in, that Outlook is all gone. So that's the, the big difference. So I think one thing to kind of just note here, Noel, um, that you were telling me earlier, the way this all brings uh, connects to CMMC and the protection of CUI is as follows, right? You're trying to um, have an enclave in which you protect CUI. And so you put it on this virtual desktop infrastructure. So that's the only, that server is the only place where CUI could live. Right. And so, you know, that's one way in which some people try and figure out um, how they put CUI um, in an enclave um, and it might work for some, your mileage may vary. Um, why don't we go to that, the next point to discuss here, which is points to consider. Um, yeah. And so why don't you say why it's not the right solution for every company? What, what do you have to tell us there? Well, you alluded to a lot of it just now saying, you know, it's your mileage may vary. So one of the things to consider, and you notice the first one is in bold, it is not the right solution for every company. You do not have to have a VDI at all. You do not have right. to have a VDI to be compliant. You don't have to have a VDI for any sort of regulations that we have in the government that I'm aware of, unless, of course, obviously you have something specific in your contract about it. 
But otherwise, compliance talk speak, like we don't need to have a VDI unless it's something that you think is the right move for you. And before committing to a VDI, and it is a commitment to a VDI, before you do that, make sure to research your different options. You know, you may have a virtual hosting situation going on, like you already have a relationship with a provider who says, right. hey, no problem, we can spin up a Amazon workspace. No big deal. Let's go ahead and do that. It's going to cost you X amount of dollars. It's going to be super easy. Here you go. But you may not have that option. And maybe you have to research some of those virtual hosting options and see if the cost is really going to work for you or the setup is going to work for you. In addition, same thing that you have to think about with the on-premises hosting options as well. Is it going to, how much is it going to cost? Do you have somebody who can actually, you know, maintain it and keep up with it? Is it something that you really want to be responsible for? I mean, these are the different things you have to sort of evaluate. And also how do VDI work within your company? You know, your business, your current process and procedures, is a VDI really going to work with that? Are you going to have to change your processes and right. procedures? Are you okay with changing those? And then lastly, what resources are available to do the implementation, either virtual or on-premises, you're going to have an implementation lift. You just are. Who's going to be responsible for that? Do your resources have the bandwidth for that? You know, these are the kind of things you want to start thinking about. And once you go through these things and, and you know, obviously cost and, and timelines and different things that you have, then you really can make an educated decision about whether or not a VDI is right for your company. Right. Um, and just to, to clarify, right, is uh, someone who's handling CUI in a VDI, are they, is this an either or, are they having it on a VDI or they're having it some sort of solution uh, to manage it uh, kind of on their, on their desktop in, in the cloud? It's, uh, how does that all work? I would say that it's not necessarily an either or. You can actually have a cloud solution and also a VDI. You can have a cloud solution and not a VDI. So it's kind of an and or and, you know, if you wanted to do it that way. And I think we're going to get into that a little bit in a second, actually. So that's a perfect segue to All right. so what, what are, are some of the benefits of a VDI? Right. Or you're right on top of it this morning. I'm telling you. I, so, I had my Cheerios. <laughs> So a VDI is not the right solution for every company. We already talked about that. But so, for some companies, there's a lot of really great benefits. Uh, one of the big ones is remote access. So if you have a remote team or even a team that's a hybrid team or, or even a bunch of different headquarters locations across the country or across the world who all need to access the same information simultaneously, this is an actually really wonderful solution for that. Using a VDI means that everybody just logs into the same machine. So it's one machine that has all the same information. They can get everything that they need. They can access CUI if that's the enclave you've created. And then they, you know, they log out of it and it's gone. So that's a really wonderful point to it. It makes centralized management, which results in cost savings. It really does. Right. Again, for, for a lot of companies, not all companies, you have that one server that you have to worry about. That's one server you have to patch. That's one server you have to update. That's one server that you have to basically deal with instead of multiple different servers, perhaps, or multiple different endpoints, whatever those may be. So that obviously is going to be a cost savings for you. And then there's security. Because like I said, when someone goes into this VDI, the minute they cut that session, that's gone. There's nothing right. on their endpoint. There's nothing in their computer. There's nothing in their in any of their memory. It's just gone. So, so it that's is the surface, surface area, area for a cyber attack. attack. Exactly. It really does. So it, it can definitely make you more secure. Um, again, though, that is with the understanding that you are keeping everything up to date on that server, making sure that all of those security updates are being done. So that is something to always consider. Mm, downsides? I'm so glad you asked. So what are the possible downsides? <clears throat> what are the possible downsides? What if storage runs out? So that is a big one. If storage runs out, you can't access your desktop. So if you don't have enough storage or let's say you're having a virtual hosting option and you only got X amount of storage, the minute you go over that X amount, you can't get into that desktop interface and infrastructure anymore. Like it's, it's done. So that obviously can cause work stoppage and all kinds of different issues. Now, How if realistic you, is that, I'm sorry. How realistic is that idea of uh, maximum? Uh, really depends. I mean, it depends on what amount of information you're going to be processing on the, on this VDI. Um, how many people are going to be accessing it, what, what stuff they're going to be doing. I mean, it's, it's not super likely for most VDI situations, but it is definitely a possibility for some. Right. So I would be, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. 
These two other ones, though, are much more common. So poor network connectivity can create a very difficult user experience. And when I say difficult, I mean extremely difficult. Uh, like, like speaking from experience. I absolutely am. Um, I have used VDIs in the past and had poor connectivity, and it is, it is very frustrating to use those. So make sure that... <clears throat> If you are going to have a lot of people, you know, accessing this remotely, that they do have access to really solid internet, because if you don't have that solid internet bandwidth, it's it's going to definitely be a frustrating experience. And then to piggyback on that, if you have no network connectivity, meaning there's no internet connection, then you can't get to your virtual desktop at all. So this is something different, obviously, than with the standard endpoint like a laptop or a desktop, where if I'm not connected, I can still work on that file. Right. I can still, you know, update that PowerPoint or update that Excel file or whatever. You can't do that with this. So that's something to take into consideration too. There, there are different types of companies out there who are doing different types of things. And there are different places they go that maybe they don't have network connectivity. So this may not be the right solution for them. So definitely things to think about. <laughs> I think the last thing we need to talk about, though, is about, uh, you know, how Prevail could be used at, on a VDI. I'm telling you, Orly, right on top of it. Yes. How can Prevail Early be morning here? I'm telling you, this is a great, it's, it's great morning. How can Prevail be used on a VDI? So this is something that I've had a conversation, I've had multiple conversations, our different compliance calls that we've had with um, prospective customers, as well as current customers, asking about some of the choices that they have when, when using Prevail. And one of the ones that we talk about is VDI. So Prevail can be set set up as a multi-tenant option, meaning that you have multiple accounts that are on that one server, that one VDI. So like you would be able to Orly, you know, sign in as Orly on that VDI and see just your prevail information, your right. prevail mail, your prevail drive, your prevail in information on that server. I would then log in as Noel and I would also only see Noel's prevail, you know. Noel, prevails drive, etc. So it means that you don't have that inadvertent crossover of anything. So it's, it's really important that we have that option, the multi-tenant option to be able to do that because otherwise then you just have one prevail instance and everybody would just access the same one and it really wouldn't work. So that it definitely can be a really wonderful solution. We have a few, we actually have more than a few customers who use VDIs and put prevail on the VDI. So in that way, they only have the one endpoint to worry about, which is that server. And then the right. other endpoints that people have, like their computers themselves, become out of scope. Because I guess this is an, uh, uh, you know, a make or bake, break the bank type thing. But so are they just putting the VDI on a, a server like an AWS server or? It depends. It depends. There's a lot of different options out there. There's so many different hosting options. AWS is a big one, but I mean, there's, there's Microsoft ones. There's, I, I'm sure there's Google ones as well. I mean, I'd be very surprised if there weren't. I, I definitely know for a fact about the AWS since we have a relationship with them, but I'm not as sure about the other ones. But yeah, there's, there's also a lot of third party options out there too, if you're interested, but you know, make sure to do your due diligence. Definitely, if you're looking for a virtual hosting option, make sure it's it's a reputable company that you're going to get, you know, everything that you need from them and you're not going to end up in a situation where it's like a bait and switch thing and, you know, nobody wants to deal with that. But yeah, definitely, it is a really wonderful option for some companies. But again, like we talked about, it's not for everybody and you absolutely do not have to have a VDI to be compliant. It's just a choice if that's something that works. I was worried about that. Whew. One last thing. One last thing. And I think... That was all of our slides today. I, I think that was. Wow. So you know what? I, I think we're back, um, Noel. And I think we've also talked uh, about this topic and said everything that we need to. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you for another great compliance corner, Noel. Thank you. And remember, if you are thinking about Prevail or if you just have some compliance questions, there will be information in the show notes to have a 15-minute call with me. And if you are already a Prevail customer, please feel free to email me at compliance at prevail.com. All right. Thanks so much, Noel. We'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.